Hi folks, this is Jake, Hope you're okay today. We're looking at the Didache, and uh, it's an ancient writing. And um, Jonathan Draper writes on the Gospels Perspective, page 269. Since it was discovered in a monastery in Constantinople and published by P. Uh, Bray Enios in 1883, the Didache, or the teaching of the Twelve Apostles, has continued to be one of the most disputed of early Christian texts. It has been depicted by scholars as anything between the original of the Apostolic Decree of 50 AD and a late arc chasing fiction of the early 3rd century. It bears no date itself, nor does it make reference to any datable external event, yet the picture of the church which represent, it represents could only be described as primitive, reaching back to the very early stages of the church order and practice in a way which largely agrees with the picture presented by the New Testament while at the same time posing questions for many traditional interpretations of the first period of the church life. Fragments of the Didache were found uh, at uh, Oxry Incus uh, 1782 from the 4th century and a Coptic translation uh, from the 3rd to 4th century. Traces of the use of this text and the high regard it enjoyed are widespread in the literature of the 2nd and 3rd centuries, especially in Syria and Egypt. Um, so there we are that's um, uh, Stephen J. Patterson comments on the dating of the Didache on the Gospel of Thomas and Jesus page 173 of course today when the similarities between the Didache and Barnabas or the Shepherd of Hermas are no longer taken as proof that the Didache is literally dependent upon the documents the trend is to date the dedicated much earlier at least by the end of the first century or the beginning of the second and in the case of Jean P. Audit as early as 50 to 70 CD. Um, Dominic Crossan, The Birth of Christianity, page 364 writes, The scribe who copies those seven texts signed the, the last leaf as lean, notary and sinner and dated the compilation to June 11, 1056. The Didache then was a small text, fifth among others, mostly larger than itself, lost in a small library in Ferner section of Istanbul, halfway up the west side of the Golden Horn, now known as Codex Hierosolimatemus Tainus 54. That volume was removed to the Patriarch at Jerusalem in 1887, where it remains. Earlier Coptic and Ethiopic versions also exist for a few chapters of this text, especially important are two Greek fragments, Papyri um, Oxyrhynchus, 1782, dated in the late 4th century and published by Green, Fell and Hunt in 1922. These tiny scraps, about 2 inches by 2 inches apiece, contain 1.3c and 4a and 273-32. Despite small differences, the wording of those scraps is very close to Byrenio's text. This is very important confirmation of the basic accuracy of Codex of the Hierosolimin Mitanus 54, given the gulf of centuries between it and the early fragments. Crossan writes concerning the Coptic manuscript, page 379, a Coptic papyrus containing the Didache, uh, 10.3b and 12.2a dated to the end of the 4th or start of the 5th century was brought in 923 for what was then the British Museum catalogue as British Library Oriental Manuscript 9271 F. Stanley Jones and Paul A. Merakai offer a, a photographic reproduction along with an excellent translation translation and commentary on this top uh, document they conclude that this sheet was originally cut from a roll of papyrus in order to serve as a double leaf in codex. So that's some of the uh, textual criticism on the um, on the book. So let's see what time we've got left. So here's a little snippet reading: the Lord's teaching through the twelve apostles to the nations, chapter one, the two ways and the first commandment. There are two ways, one of life and one of death, but a great difference between the two ways. The first way of life then is this, first you shall love God 
who made you. Second, love your neighbour as yourself. And do not do to, to another what you would do, not want do done to you. And of these sayings, the teaching is this, Bless those who curse you and pray for your enemies and fast for those who persecute. For what reward is there for loving those who love you? Do not the Gentiles do the same. But love those who hate you, and you shall not have an enemy. Abstain from rest, fleshly and worldly lust. If someone strikes your right cheek, turn to him the other also, and you shall be perfect. If someone impresses you for one mile, go with him too. If someone takes your cloak, give him all your coat. If someone takes from, from you what is yours, ask it not back, for indeed you are not able. Give to everyone who asks you, and ask it not back. So that's just a little bit. In um, in chapter 7, uh, there's an emphasis on the baptism and teaching on the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And in chapter 9, there's teaching on the Eucharist. And it's clear about Christ's death. <coughs> and in my opinion, that it's what I would call orthodox teaching. Um, and it has quite a lot of historical stuff about Jesus in the terms of his teaching you know why we just read in that first chapter there that is exactly what was being taught in the Sermon on the Mount so what do you think?